I think I figured it out. I think it was just that last week, Hengi got like four or five grabs get eaten. And I wished he wasn't there. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty rough. <laughs> he is there and he's on Widowmaker and it's actually kind of a good pick in this situation. Should be able to put some good pressure on Shailin. It actually is because he was notably very good on the Widowmaker when we did see it. And in this particular matchup where you expected Nova MS Ooh. to roll out on DPSs, Nova already down one member. Yeah, good wraparound play between Ken Mahororo and Westep to find a Ting in that position. And it just, again, makes things even better for Hengi because now one of the other people that could otherwise be contesting him is out of the picture. Ken Mahororo able to give Nexus the slip there and Hengi finds Mui, runs him down. This is a good start for Jupiter in the fight. And I don't know how relevant this is anymore, but I've confirmed that Hengi did in fact play in the week one match. The only member well, they replaced is Doo Doo So there we have it. Case closed. Just, uh, Mystery sold. The map mystery solved. <laughs> Pixie is an idiot. <laughs> Sabagod does find a pick on Nexus, so... No, I mean, Jupiter have kept the lead this entire time. Unfortunately, what they haven't been able to do is capture the point. Now that Nova MS have largely reset, they've also uh, resurrected Nexus, come back in with a retooled team composition. They're actually the ones sitting on the point. Jupiter still need to actually get pressure. Yeah, and we see in and he just got hacked just a little while before. Has a nano boost available. Valkyrie nearly online for Burner as well. Nova have the cap and they have ultimates. And now a team can get a little bit unlocked on this McCree. He does have EMP the flashbang into West F, who does still get the follow up, find the kill. And EMP on the Wrecking Ball is uh, peculiar, to say the least. I don't know who the EMP actually hit. We do it have it going in the well, but it went on probably only one member because you didn't really see the EMP do too much. Well, actually, sorry, it kind of got on West F. We're talking about EMP here. Never you mind that. Nano yep. boost went on West Depp. The only was... member I saw hacked was Inan, so yeah. it, at max got one member. Either way, not quite good enough. Mui will have his own pretty soon. Hengi's still making trades happen, but not quite enough to give Jupiter a leg up to actually take the point just yet. And it says a lot that Jupiter, you know, they are able to make their way in. They are able to get some positive trades, and even then, they don't actually turn that into pressure and presence on the point and an ability to flip its possession. And now you're starting to see 47, nearly 50% online for Nova. They still have a stack of ultimates available. Jupiter still not quite in a position to really do much about it. Good hack on a Ting allows them to finish him off. But there's Mui's EMP, and it's a far more effective one than whatever it was Ken Mahororo achieved. That's a one for one on the Pharah side of things as well. But good find on Shailin, who did otherwise have a Rocket Barrage. Burner will probably look for a res, and Claire has no such options. So a Ting who died at the start of the fight, I believe he got res back in, and he's still alive. Pays dividends. That's a huge kill onto Ken Mahororo. A Ting had 10 hit points. Him and Mui were both so, so low, but couldn't get picked off, couldn't get secured. And you want to see them go down if you're on Jupiter because you need some player advantage from somewhere. And you're also now having another mystery kind of solved where more than partway through the series uh -oh. so far. And a team who's a main tank player actually on the DPS, not doing a bad job. Okay, so this time two members of Nova MS died and one of them was the Mercy that could commit a raid. So for the first time, I actually feel like this is dangerous for Nova MS. It uh, does look like they're potentially going to lose this fight. But even then, I don't know if I count them out because so many of these fights have started with a positive pick for Jupiter that's went over. into anything. But... This time it does. And they had a lot of ultimates as well. You see the supercharger come down, instant hack by Kemal Roro, who saves the EMP still. And those two early picks now are really paying dividends. And those are the kind of picks you wanted to see earlier when a ting was on 10 HP. That should have probably have been the take. That would have been now Jupiter much further in, I guess, uh, recuperation of losses in terms of objective. They wouldn't be at 20, they'd be at 30 plus possibly if they got the point earlier. Nova have good comeback abilities though. They have time to play. They just got to get some ultimates out of Jupiter first. Hengi's just gonna look for a pulse bomb or something. Again, a good opening pick here for Jupiter. Could just keep them ahead in the game, keep some time on the points. EMP comes out, plus a nice biotic grenade. So they do get a decent bit done there. Of MS taking the trades. Raise on both out sides. Out. Jupiter's still in possession of the point here, but they are starting to lose a bit of pressure. Good kill by Ken Mahororo, though. So this now needs to be Nova resetting very quickly because they got the ultimates out of Jupiter. Finally, they are still getting some counter trades. They will have their own EMP. This now becomes a fight that they will look to win to retake the point and finish the round. You did see at the back end of that, Burner was able to shuttle himself to safety thanks to the friendly tank of a ting, who is, by the way, in for the flex tank role here. So that's going to be EMP coming out from Mui, who unfortunately gets drilled down. But they do at least find Hengi, so no pulse bomb just yet. Rez is still available on either side of the fence, but Burner taking a lot of pressure from Ken Mahororo, while Claire does find that Rez onto Hengi. Oh, Ooh, and that's just... <laughs> Both DPSs 
die to their own ultimates while simultaneously getting a kill. They self-traded kills. That's impressive. And in the community would say that one is a two down and for Jupiter. <laughs> They have 90% still ticking up right now. They are still waiting on respawners and over slightly now edging them out in terms of kills. And but a they lot need of that, speed on the point. A lot of that is because both Henge and Amakin died to their own ultimates. Otherwise, they'd just be unequivocally ahead here. Instead, they have to rely on Ken Mohororo, but luckily he does deliver. A Ting, if they can keep him out of the mech, would be nice. We're looking to keep the pressure on these squishier members. There's a lot of easy pickings targets here. A team goes down, Mui as well. And Jupiter, they do look like Jupiter they have poised to recover from that 0 to 99. They found themselves at as they clean up the last few kills. They will secure the first point of Ilios. And this is honestly a nice comp for Jupiter to be playing because so far we've seen them playing a lot of 3 3 goats, which hasn't really been their forte. Notably, we've been talking about Hengi, okay, the comparison between Hazari and his Watermaker isn't really a comparison because one is just way better than the other, and yes, it is the Watermaker that's much better than Hazari, so for Jupiter to be kind of um, playing a different style in the meta where they're not just going onto the standard 3-3 where they are kind of flexing out onto some other picks they're much more comfortable on, Kemaho Roro is doing a decent job on the Sombra as well, not, not something that'll blow you away, but certainly He's not giving the game away either to the other team, so Jupiter on this comp should be feeling pretty decent. Well, they're going to roll out on it again, and I think rightfully so. I would also say we actually saw quite a lot of mileage out from Hengi on the Tracer. And, uh, unfortunately, he didn't get his ultimate off for a very long time because he was often hacked out, but still getting kills, still getting pressure. Let's we'll see if Jupiter can repeat the success. So Ting's back on a DPS now. He was playing a lot of McCree last round, then on to you know, a bit of the diva, so he's definitely swapping roles, at least for this game. Ooh, as the point does unlock soon. Good pressure on Ken Mahororo. Hengi goes down in the 1v1 against Mui, and that's a good start for Nova MS. Limits what damage Hengi can do, certainly, and no real counter trades yet. Now West Step goes down, so Nova MS looking a lot better in this neutral fight. And a really nice teamwork by Enen and Mui as well to secure the kill onto West Step. The sleep dart into the kill from Mui who challenging Hengi on the Widow is a really good play from Nova, considering they know they have their own very good Widow maker. They know that, okay, Hengi's been doing great on this hero. Let's take the fight to him directly by pressuring him with our own Widow. And look, that's the reality of ruins for the Widowmakers is they often do find themselves more uh, one versus one in these duels. You don't see that as much on well that we just had. So maybe getting the better end of that trade I wouldn't be surprised if that is how most of this map goes for him. Well, Hengi has swapped onto the Tracer now. What I do respect is Amber can actually still play the Brigida. He can get a lot oh. of value on top of both the Ting and Shailin. And speaking of getting some value, Hengi does find the counterpart trade on his... There you have it. Member. It's a nice CMP though out from Shia Lin. They're looking to finish off these members though. Claire and Amma can also bionate it and they get low, but no one dies. Oh, okay. good catch on West there, but Jupiter had their chance to fight back now as Mubi finds another one Three. and a third. Look at this guy go. It's been so long since we've really seen this man be able to pop up on DPS. Man, it is a pleasure. And the support sniper on the side, in 77 is going to take the other two down. Between the two of them, that's five kills. And you saw it right from the first shot on to West Step, the mid-air headshot as he's trying to dive on. Unsuccessful Jupiter are going to be changing yet again. Hengi this time onto the Zarya. They are feeling their chances on a standard 3-3 instead. Nexus is going to go ahead and throw out a minefield just to hamper Jupiter, make it harder for them to, or hamster Jupiter, perhaps that should be. That does mean that Jupiter, having made the swap now, are very much behind the eight ball and the wrecking ball. So many balls. West step now, stunned out, taken down. Nova MS slightly in the lead, 90%. This is their fight to win. It's already a good one. It just prevents the dive, which also means no real pressure onto Mui. Sure, there's not as many squishy members this time, but it's just enough, and it can still do big damage to the likes of Hengi, and well, no one's on the point anyway. Nova MS tied up. 100 to zero, great start from Nova. You can see straight away, Mui has Hengi's number, early Widow headshot kill on his own counterpart, and then later on, Jupiter just not feeling it. Hengi is not able to get enough damage in, not able to get any kills in there, swaps over to Tracer, realizes that's not going to work either. Eventually, Jupiter go on to the 3-3, and we had a conversation about, okay, Jupiter going on 3-3, probably not a good sign. They haven't really been performing on that cop. They do much better when they're flexing over to DPS. You get Amakin onto the Pharah. That's his best hero. You want Jupiter playing what their best picks are going to be, and that's not on 3-3. What do you think Hengi's number is? Three. I think it's zero. Three. What? What? Zero of what? 
A lot of numbers do start with zero. I think it's 0212914532. Somebody ring that. Let's see if that's SQZ10. I've given it. Tom 06229. That's already a pick though onto Sabagard. That's just, uh, I don't know, supporter side? What do you call that? But it is resable here for Jupiter, so it's not too bad. We do still need to push on to this point. The Ting finds one of Ken Mahororo. Oh. oh, hello. Oh, should I say goodbye? And then also getting pressured out. Where's that find another one? Dude's just on fire. <laughs> Playing pinball on the point here. Now Nova MS having nearly capped out. They will actually end up getting the cap, but Jupiter have a huge numbers advantage. This should go to them. That's three kills now. Wistep's probably going to claim number four pretty soon once this bubble dissipates. And unfortunately, there Nexus just doesn't quite have the HP. Nova, after losing two members, I assume being bumped off the edge. First one on Shylin, we definitely know got bumped off the edge. Got such a huge player advantage. And Nova's at least going to try and delay this point capture as long as possible. Yeah. Get themselves over 20%. I mean, that's pretty impressive when you consider that they were actually losing the fight, really, from just about the get-go. It was Sabagod who died first, but he got rezzed, and Nova MS just started getting picked off after that. But it is Jupiter rightly in control of the point now. I just got to be careful. Losing members off the side is Hello. so tough. Henke now finally finds something. But also, like, you don't have Mui counter sniping him this time, so he's kind of just free-firing into the other team. Infrasite is going to be nice against Mui as well for what it's worth. Especially with Mui close to a Transcendence. So as much as it's not that one, like the straight one-to-one -one duel between the two, it is still up to Hengi to keep a lid on Mui. And we do need to see when this gets you. Okay, he has in fact now used it, but Mui's at 90%. So isn't quite looking to EMP just yet. Nova, however, are trying to push in and they have do have eyes on that rotation. Ooh. Rock and Barrage in the back line from Amakin doesn't get stops i mean he gets in and gets a bit of extra damage as well and nexus nearly went down a bit before that he's ultimately survived but jupiter found an opportunity while he was recovering to pick off some members and just extend their time on the point here and we talk about jupiter okay taking a map after week one every single time they played a match this could be that one map that they take so far because nova is taking a long time to try and go back to this point they have an emp available but so does kemo hororo and he's about to engage yep kemo hororo has got the drop on them in and does have the transcendence to help respond but jubin have still got a lot of tools in the toolbox nice cmp though out from mui players already popped the valkyrie but they get a nice counter trade here with nexus going down that's actually quite impactful as the sound barrier does come out from Burner. Nova MS do at the point, but it's even numbers, and Jupiter still have other ultimates to lean into. They still got to deal with Anakin in the skies. He's doing a lot of damage now. Ooh. Mine's coming in from West Step. Yeah, you would have liked to see that on the point. Unfortunately, it's just off to the side, and then he gets bumped off to the edge, sent to a watery grave. Good revenge. Huge buy in there from Sabagod. Might give an opening. They weren't quite able to follow up on it, so now Jupiter... They've just kind of been repelled in what could have otherwise been a very successful and arguably favorable fight. Nova MS just kind of squeaked their way in and Jupiter didn't really get much done. And then finally the kill into Amakin. So that's a really important member they got to get down. And Nova, having held on to the point for the majority of that fight, have ticked themselves up to about 64 now. So nearly matching the 71 and will be soon overtaking them. Jupiter do not have a lot of time to get these next ultimates up. So yeah. most cases... This would be Nova kind of capping now, and Jupiter thinking, okay, we've got a lot of time to work with. That's just not really happening. There's about one fight remaining if Jupiter do not go in quickly, and they don't have enough ultimates. They just have an EMP soon. And that's the thing. Nova MS outstripped them for ultimates. They need to not die in rotation so that they've got all members up when that EMP comes in, and it needs to cancel the right ultimates. A Ting tries to buy some time with the self strike, but now Kenba Hororo gets in. They don't quite stop the Primal Rage or the Transcendence. Nexus and Inn able to push those buttons quick enough, but they do still lose Shailen. Nice counter EMP though. Big quick commit on Engi and Savagod down. Claire low, looking to go down. The counter is far better, and Nova MS are going to get the better end of the comeback here as well. 99 to 71. They will close out Lighthouse. They will close out Elios. If Jupiter do get a map in the series, it's certainly not going to be this one. And that's kind of concerning because you're thinking, when does this one map tax come in? It will. You'd like to think so to come in, otherwise it'll be a one-map tax evasion oh, coming through yeah, yeah, yeah. from Nova MS. <laughs> yeah. You can take the series, but... You I'm get not... down to, like, three wins <laughs> on the one. side of Nova, and you'll be like, hey, pay up. Like... <laughs> That's uh, how it works, really. Um, but um, it, I do have to say it was kind of dangerously close for Nova in many cases. They did lose a round in the middle of that. Okay, on Ruins, 100-0. to zero. You like to think that is more likely what the result was going to be in terms of pre-match prediction. You, you think that was a level of dominance that Nova should be displaying.
But then Lighthouse for quite a while is fairly Jupiter favored, and then Jupiter once again, once they lose this cap and they make this huge roll swap, hero swap on to 3-3 again, I think that's just where they're weak. Unfortunately, I think they need to keep playing DPSs. Yes, it's not comfortable because it feels like you're going against the meta. It feels like it's almost a symptom of just not being a good coach team, yeah. but... If you want to win, I, I think they got to play to what's uh, going to give them the best chance of winning, and playing yeah. goats is not it. It's like, do the math, right? Like, if, if you can't win when you're playing goats, you might as well play something else where you have won, where you have a better chance of winning. Now, look, yeah, I know there's those maps, you know, where they have won, and some of that has been with 3-3, but that's been against very different teams as well, teams that themselves aren't necessarily only playing 3-3. Nova MS also are a team with a lot of flexibility in other team comps they can play. And they have a really strong 3-3. Tonight feels like maybe a slight exception because they do have both a Ting and Nexus in. It's creating some slightly different situations. Yeah. But even then, look, a Ting is still holding his own in all the necessary picks to kind of fill that void. So I think you're yeah. right. Jupiter need to stick with what works for them. It's certainly a weird roll swap as we're about to head into map to pretty soon Vol Sky Industries. But right now it's working. I'm still wondering when it, when it stops working because you have a player that's been playing main tank for his entire career. Now today is playing, I guess, at minimum flex tank because he did show the diva. But for the most part, he's played more actual DPS like yes, Tracer yeah. and you know the likes of that McCree, McCree than than actual any tanks. And I wonder if this is going to be the kind of play that ends up biting them because it's not just that. It's also Nexus coming in where he hasn't played for the whole season. Now he's suddenly yeah. here. They actually have D Crown on the roster as well. So three main tanks. This is your number three you're bringing in. And your actual main tank that you've been using is now playing a DPS. It's just very wacky. And I wonder if it if that ends up giving away that one map that we talk about for for no for uh, Jupiter to take. Maybe. Maybe it just doesn't happen at all. Because I mean, when all was said and done, right, when the dust settled, Nova MS were still good enough to win Ilios, which looked like it was potentially winnable for Jupiter. Now, look, that doesn't mean it's the most winnable map they're going to have this entire series. We can't say that. We haven't seen the rest of the series. But the reality is, look, if, you almost feel like if Nova MS uh, could get through that, they can get through it. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking if it continues down this trajectory, eventually it, it fails. Eventually the dam breaks open and then suddenly you give that map over because they were close enough that Jupiter really threatened them. And, you know, we'll give, we'll give benefit of the doubt. It breaks in map five, but we never get there because they 4 <laughs> I will... I mean, if we get to map five, that's already two over. That's way more than right, the What I'm saying is we wouldn't get there if they 4 over, but that would be where it would have broken. But, but I suppose, but uh, if we get to... If, at that stage, you better get the series. It's a nonsense hypothetical. <laughs> because if they've won two maps, they can win three, and they can just take the whole series. But, I don't know. Gosh, that hypothetical future sounds so dreamy for Jupiter. I bet you they wish they were living there instead of here. Here, where they are 0-3 in the season for matches, 0-1 in this series for maps. And 0-2-1-6-2-9-4-9-3-2. Give it a call, see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> My... I don't know what that is. That could be that could be yours. It is not, I can confirm as much. Well. But look, this is Jupiter on DPSs and Nova MS doing the same as uh, for what it's worth. The fact that Jupiter are doing it on the defense is partially a good read and also partially to me says that they do want to keep so these DPSs. Nova, in a way, kind of have to match this because if they want to play 3-3, they're going to run into a lot of trouble. Unless they're very confident in trying to bring out you know, more of a standard 3-3. This Ooh. is an awful position for Inan to be in. Yep, dude's not going to last much longer. Hengi gets the kill credit, which is actually quite nice. He gets a bit of damage in, keeps him ahead in terms of ultimate charge, but counter trade starting to come in. The Sabagod goes down. That is quite a painful one. Claire as well getting pressured. Will escape out. Jupiter, they need to get a bit more done here. Nova is still losing members, though. Okay, there's one res in there, but then they instantly lose Burner, who is possibly one of the key members here for this offense. Killing West Step is nice, but look, West Step can reset relatively quickly, and... Oh, man, Ooh. now Inan just pops off as soon as he comes back into the fray. Maybe takes some of these members a bit by surprise, and Claire going down is a nice Three. counter trade for Burner, and Inan just, I mean... Feels like no matter who you put on Widowmaker on Nova MS, eventually they're going to get a 3k he, headshot. He's trying to uh, he's trying to outdo Mui here. He's like, right, Mui got three headshots in a row. Let me get four. He's still looking for number four, but at minimum he'll have matched. Oh, <laughs> sick. Boom, that's number four. I was just about to say, I hope it's this one. And there you go. Oh, man. 
Nearly got Wes down. Five, well. but uh, Mui's like, oh, you're not getting yeah. five. I'm going to steal this <laughs> yeah, one yeah. away from you. I'm not letting you get that far ahead of me. But that's, I mean, when the dust settles, Nova MS have got the better trades and what was a Look, very Austria. protracted engagement. Nearly got the headshot of Sabagod. It went for a very long time in Jupiter, even at the upper hand at some junctures, but as the resets came in, as the respawns came in, Nova MS just cleaned the floor. Curious about who swaps to what now. Okay, so far, Amakin is going to go into the Batiste. Jupiter have maintained the rest of their ultimates. Basically, Claire going over to Lucio. Here comes the EMP. And it's a big one. No counter EMP to come out from Hangi while he's hacked. Immortality Field goes down to save West Steps Bacon or whatever meat hamsters produce. Now the counter EMP comes out and... Well, that's uh, the EMP versus the EMP she tells you not to worry about. So Nova MS are going to be able to get the snowball push at this rate. Looking to finish this one off relatively cleanly. Minefield is nice, oh. but... Doesn't It'll get much work. done compared to Nexus's, and that's going to be the full cap for Nova MS. And I'll tell you what, if this push doesn't work, Nova would have to change. And you see Amakin going to the Batiste. The reason he goes there is because he's expecting the EMP to come through from Mui. And what one hero pick can you go on that can maybe save the day? Okay, EMP comes in, you throw out the immortality field. That might be good enough. The reasoning is pretty sound there, but unfortunately the case for Jupiter was they were behind enough going into B that their comp wasn't really going to work. Amakin there as well, he stays on the fire, but probably just gets sniped out by Inan at that stage, so smart to change anyway. Basically, Jupiter were not likely to defend that anyway, unless they could somehow deny the ultimates of Nova MS. Their own EMP would have to be staggeringly good, and Nova would then have to change their entire composition, reset all their ultimates, waste a bunch of time, and then Jupiter would be in a good stop. But a lot has to happen significant amount a lot also has to happen on their own offense now jupiter that is 531 on the board for nova ms don't know if jupiter can match that I suppose we'll find out and i think for jupiter if you even just take it to time bank that would already be a pretty big win in terms of okay taking this a little bit longer a moral win because in some cases you don't really even expect them to cap out b a sure you'll they'll probably get that one but b it's hard to say. You can definitely see the hold coming through from Nova here. We don't go to a time bank at all. That 531 looks really pretty, but ends up not being really relevant if Jupiter don't finish this map, and that's a very likely scenario. Coming out the gate. Louis like my turn. Yeah. <laughs> right, you got four? Here's up. five. Let me do five. If he does that, if, I mean, at that point, Enid has to do six. And if he does that, there's no way Mui can ever match oh, up. Right then, he's like, Ting, get out of my way. You're blocking my oh. line of sight. Come on, dude. I had that shot on Damakin. You ruined it. And it's actually double sniper. So Shailin on the Hanzo as well. Kimoho Roro's got a big job to do. He's one versus two in that regard. I'm so, oh, now 1v1. Really dead. I'm so looking forward to Shailin getting a 5k now on the Hanzo. I mean, I say that, but he is also, like, maybe about to die. So. Mui's going to come back on the Sombra. If he comes back at all, that's a nice, uh, well, I would say kill onto West it, but I think maybe he just didn't want to live anymore. I'll tell you what, because Amakin's taking down taking down Mui, who's now coming back on his Sombra, there's a lot of space open for him to play, so he's going quite aggressive with his damage, which is now putting behind Jupiter, well, putting behind Nova, rather. Mui cannot catch a break. Nice hack onto a Ting, allows the d to come through. So look, West step went down with a bit of an oopsie, but he comes back in, and Jupiter were still capping on the point during a chunk of that anyway. So Rez onto Shailin though, and a nano boost onto Nexus, who has found himself a kill, but now Amakin he's found work. himself in the middle of the firing line. Shailin finds one back on Amakin, and no, the MS aren't out of it just yet. Nexus, if he can get his Primal Rage, could still try to recover this one. No, the MS have decided they want to keep committing. They may just be about to work. Nexus is doing quite a lot here now, giving a lot of time for Nova MS to get their members back. They are still bleeding out, so... Rather, Nova's bleeding out, so they need to be able to get more kills from Nexus. He finally finishes off Sabagod, but that took him longer than he wanted, means he doesn't get as much out of the rest of his Primal Rage. Now the EMP comes out from Hengi, who immediately goes down, but the few members it catches are very low, and there's just more firepower for Jupiter. Credit to Nova MS. They made what was an early winning fight for Jupiter last two whole minutes. But it is still a cap for Jupiter. In fact, it really looked like maybe Jupiter wasn't going to make that cap at all. But luckily for them, being the attackers on A, they have a slight respawn advantage that they can utilize. And for Nova, Nexus did a huge job. They're taking three, nearly four members down, I believe, which kind of even things out quite significantly. Jupiter now walk into this one with no ultimates. This is going to be a recharge-only fight for them. Bit of a rough spot to be in. 
Fox. They do kind of want to snowball. They're not going to be able to match the time, to say the least. It's going to be a nano boost onto Nexus. Dragon Strike as well. Just looking to pressure Jupiter out a little bit. We'll see if Nova MS can charge up some other ultimates. They've got EMP now. And that's going to be the key ultimate here because Jupiter have mostly survived. Okay, the Dragon Strike went through. No one died to that. And Sonic Arrow is going to spot everyone out. You can tell that Milwee will be looking for positioning now to see where this EMP will drop. And this will allow Nova MS to charge a lot of ultimates, especially Nexus, who can just dive straight in. Well, not anymore because he's hacked. He's pretty close to his ultimate anyway, so it's the EMP out. Unfortunately, it's a bit lackluster. And he finds Amakin in West Step. One of those goes Ooh, down, but you. it's a counter trade to Nexus. So this is potentially doable still here for Jupiter. But it gets some pressure out here is West Step. Pengi gets picked off by Shylin. Now the trades start to fall on the unfortunate side for Jupiter, who are now backing out. And that's one member that's going to be difficult to wait for, and he also has an EMP, and for that, Jupiter will back out completely. They don't want to risk losing any more members. They want to make sure they get the full six. They want to make sure the EMP will come into play, because Nova do not have a counter so far. Burner at 61%. It's not going to have a sound barrier available. And then at full for the nano boost, it's going to be able to save one member. Of MS, though, if they survive the EMP, they do have a lot to bring to bear. So this is going to be very critical execution for Jupiter. Just an aggressive self-destruct. They find Ken Mahororo, oh, yeah, actually. 96. So scattering Jupiter's positioning has created some opportunities for Nova MS, who do also commit a nano boost. But when all said and done, Jupiter only actually lost the one member. They do also lose time, but, but that's not too bad. Well, that is also the most important thing. We say it's not too bad, but they are now getting lower and lower. And if we are going to a time bank, that time does matter. And... It's a matter that, it's it's the fact that Jupiter have consistently, okay, they drop one member, they fully reset, that's another minimum 30 seconds off the clock. They still haven't really committed this EMP, and when we checked the ultimates early on, we said there weren't good counters. Now Nova Emers have a lot of ultimates, and Sal Barrow will be joining that soon. There it is, the EMP finally comes out, but Amakin's already down, and Enin finds, oh man, it's an absolute disaster for Jupiter, who had a great EMP and a lot of ultimates, but committed into an immense amount of damage that Nova had already thrown out. Well, that's the thing. We've finally seen EMP, but it's not from Kengi. It's actually from Mui instead, and that just means Nova yep. pulled the trigger first. Yikes. Jupiter still sitting on all these ultimates, and it's not a good place to be on where you're sitting this heavily on ultimates, but you failed about three pushes in a row because in that time, you could have made an attempt, maybe yep. going to tickle two, and then recharge. You could have been on another EMP, another grab, but you're still on your first one. Six minutes has now become three minutes, and... Look, if Jupiter lose this one, you really start to lose all confidence, right? Six so ultimates, by the way. be it. The rally first. They if you can't win with six alive. ultimates, you're not going to win at all. They commit nano boost. I believe that went onto West Step. Nah, it's a nice biotic grenade onto Nexus, who does go down. So now Jupiter, I mean, when's the EMP coming? I guess they can't quite get an ideal position anyway. Burner is Waiting for Burner. hanging off to the side. They get a manual hack on Burner, so that could actually be an opportunity to go, but maybe now they don't even need to. They got a DMEC on a Ting. They found Shylin. They can commit it later on as the resets come in. That's going to be the sound barrier, but it gets less value now. Grav comes out from Ken Mohororo. Jupiter have committed just about everything they have, but they are ahead in the fight. They need to keep a lid on the respawners, though. That's barely getting out alive there, but on the whole, Nova MS getting the bad end of every single part of this fight. It took a long, long time, but finally, Jupiter have done it. And this is with six ultimates, and they needed, in some cases, you feel like now they needed all six. It, if this wasn't going to be the push, they probably would not have capped, because time was getting so low, they were never going to get this far ahead in ults ever again. You also can imagine, they lose here, Nova get way more ults in response. Yeah. So, uh, Time is still so low, though, and that's the unfortunate reality. It's still 5.31 to, I believe, about two minutes total on the clock. So I think this is West Step going over the edge. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit rough. That's the golf ball in the water, unfortunately. Um, oh. The back on that B offense and defense there, it is concerning how long it took and also concerning how much, basically, they put into one single push, and that is... A lot of points of failure. They didn't actually lose any members, but you can imagine a scenario where, much like many of the pushes we've seen from Jupiter, they get one member down, they sorry, they lose one member early. That's now a 5v6. Now you're thinking, do we still push with five ultimates? Do we wait for this respawn? Because if we wait, Nova then get more ultimates as well. They then have a better response. Yes, we'll have six ultimates, but Nova still have respawn advantage. They still have, you know, they now have much better counters that they didn't have before. It just doesn't get easier. Jupiter. 
Unfortunately, if it takes you like three, four minutes to find yeah. that push, look at your time. Now you've got two minutes. You don't get to do that again. And that's to say nothing of the fact that it took them two whole minutes to cap point A the first time around. And even then, there was a point towards the end where they nearly lost it anyway. So that's all Nova MS really need to lean into. And also, Mui gets to play his favorite hero, the Torbjorn, which he's been playing a lot this season. Oh, baby. To mixed results, I'd have to say. That was a very generous way to put it, but it was. I just didn't want to be mean. And I don't really care about being mean, so oh, he looks average on Torbjorn, and well, I, I was going to throw Hengi under the bus again, but I, I felt I, I felt remorse. As I'm as offended for Mui. Yeah, no, uh -huh. Mui, you, you're lovely. Look, he got a 3K on Widowmaker. He's done his work. That's the whole hook of the lifetime, and just slows Jupiter down an insane amount. This is just about half their time now gone. And by the way, it's a good read against Jupiter. Oh, um, two for two. Okay. You know they're going to be playing uh, some form of DPS comp on A. It's what they used before. So you're thinking to yourself, well, what do we want to do here? Do we play an Orisa Hong combo that we can maybe get some value out of? Because we don't really want to play the 3-3 here. We can play the DPS ourselves, but it'll be a trade. It'll be quite messy like last time. This seems a little safer from Nova MS. And if nothing else, even if they lose A, it will take so much time. Jupiter will not get us until overtime. This is just so brilliant. It's it's the full on like it's shooting ducks, you know. You line them up, shoot them down. Every time the Hulk comes out, I just hear a ting going pull. That's already one dead on the side of Jupiter, who aren't actually really on the point here. Unfortunately, another Hulk hook and Amakin goes down. You're looking at three for three. You're looking at the kill feed, thinking, okay, uh, Jupiter getting something. Oh, they got something. No, that's just a turret. And Mui will be somewhat okay with giving that one away. You do have Shailen sleeping at the moment, so though, so that may be one pick. Lives on oh, 2 HP. Oh, yeah. 4 for 4 out of a ting. Dude's just having a real party right now on the Roadhog. And the one member you expect the Jupiter to maybe get a kill on stays alive as well. Stabgun comes back into play. This will be the final push from Jupiter. Nexus and a ting just looks slick. That was another one just there on Hengi, by the way. Another Nanaboost gets committed onto a ting who gets put to sleep, but Woken straight back up and still in the front line. Gets the whole hog, finds West Step, keeps the pressure down on the rest of these members. Nanaboost on Anakin. Gonna be hard to get a lot out of. That's a nice dragon strike, though, and the bit of sleep. Nexus is still alive, though. Getting the work done. Claire going down is rough. It means no res available, and that's gonna be the full hold. I believe that's not a single tick given over either, so the best now result for Jupiter will be a draw. Which is not at all good enough, unfortunately, for I mean, this A point. They will have to defend perfectly versus 531. How many halt hooks would that be? Of, uh, honestly, one. Because they get that first halt hook, they kill the rest of the members before the cooldown refreshes, they cap the point, that's it. You don't need 531. I think there's a world where Nova get this. No, I mean, one. For, uh, I mean for Jupiter. Because Nova MS got a lot of halt hooks in their two minutes, so how many halt hooks can you get in 531 if you're the defender, assuming you full hold? All which, of them. They're not even going to play. Uh, they, uh, that's not a composition I've ever seen from Jupiter. Uh, it'd be strange to see it from them now. Again, going back to Old Faithful, play, play what is good for you, and that has been Amakin on the far. He's had reasonable success on that one, but at the same time, he. The success will be limited. Nova can choose to swap to whatever they want on the offense. That is the advantage of going on the offense. And then starting on a Widowmaker would be pretty ideal. If you're sensing that Jupiter will be playing another DPS comp, Widowmaker is going to be the hero. We saw what Inan did last time. Halt hook is nice, but these headshots are better. Nova MS. Hovering quad DPS. Sounding like Dr. Seuss up in here. And I wouldn't be surprised if they roll out on this. I mean, every single one of these is uh, a known pick, except, except for maybe a, except a for a ting. That's not even a maybe. That is but just a then, full on unknown pick. Even then, at this never point, seen him on that. We've actually not seen him at anything this, else. At this point, we've seen him on so many things that he's otherwise not been known for. It's like I feel like anything goes. Raises there onto Enin, who otherwise uh, did get shot in the heads by Ken Mahororo. <laughs> Jupiter have well, kept a lid on Nova MS for now. Yes. Yeah, not looking too good for a ting so far. No risk for him are going to be available. Ah, there he goes. And then immediately starts finding the shots. Ken Mahororo looks to keep the pressure on, but Nexus finds Savagard. And I'll be honest, I feel like the levy is already broken, especially now with Claire going down. He did get a res on Amakin before that happened, but Come no on. more res. And then there's the highlight reel. 
just looking to finish them all. Like, he and Mui are genuinely competing at this point, I think, for most kills on the highlight reel, but it's going to be the cap for Nova MS with still plenty of time to spare. Unsurprisingly, 2-0 in the series now. And I think Kemo Hororo knew what his job was. He needed to kind of put pressure on to NN77. Maybe that is the only way they can slow down that push. And yeah, it was slowed down. The Reds did come through. As soon as that happened, and no one yeah. was then shooting took five whole back at NN77. Now, that was with Kemo Hororo attempting again, just trying to throw some shots in there, again, just pushing him away. But if you're not doing that, if you're not constantly on top of him, he's getting kills. That was like another three in a row that he just got when no one was shooting him back. And honestly, um, 2 0, like you mentioned, not super surprising. This time around, it was a lot less close. Ilios, yep. you like to think it was possible. Volskaya didn't really look at all possible. So much so that a team felt like, you know what, I'm going to give Faro a go. What else can I play today? Um, and I'm going to be honest that there is going to be a limit. If you're a main tank player, there's going to be maybe a few DPSs you can swap onto that can still be reasonable. You're going to get to a limit where, no, that's just not working just, anymore. Don't, <laughs> don't go on fire. Don't play Genji. Don't, don't go any further than that. You, you found your couple of niche DPSs. So that's about it. I just, I just want him to go all in. i got to be honest. Like He's played the McCree. He's played the Pharah. I want to see. In this match, he probably can get away with it because even if he <laughs> yeah. feeds on fire, which he did... <laughs> You can have Inan just you can have Inan just completely carrying your team by getting the between, next three kills. Between him and Mui, right? They just they do enough work to kind of make up for anything really. But at the end of the day, look, we can laugh about that, but it's still been good enough to beat Jupiter twice now in terms of maps. And I mean, I would dare say there was. I think a, a team could disconnect and they could beat Jupiter. Was, <laughs> uh, uh, probably, but there's also a world where I could have even seen them full holding B. Like there was one push and Jupiter hung all their hopes of full capping on that one push it just happened to pan out and even then it wasn't anywhere near enough for them to win in time bank so I mean what more can you say about it there's still just a huge gulf between Jupiter and Nova MS right now yeah and that's just you know we we talked about maybe this gulf existing anyway when we even pre-tournament uh, Nova looking at their roster Especially was really strong golf and where he's the ball which you know only exists in certain uh, golf games where you play as the ball um, it's just marble madness at that point. We've all done that anyway. where you press the button too far and then you end up over the edge and you try and go back, but it's too late. There's too much momentum. <laughs> anyway, as, <laughs> as I'm saying, um, no, you know what? I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. I've lost my train of thought. Uh, I mean, you, you put, it, you put golf on my mind and that's all I'm thinking about right now. You just really want to go well, hit 18 now. <laughs> while I think about that, we're going to take a little bit of a break when we come back to the conclusion of the series. Two and zero to